Hi, my name is Nevi, this is Cardiac of Astrology, and let's continue with Virgo and what can Virgos expect from March 2024. So... March, let's start with the fact that Mercury is entering into Aries on the 9th of March and it's happening in your 8th house. So Mercury in Aries going through your 8th house happening from the 9th of March. Um, the 8th house is the house of shared resources. So credits, debts, inheritance, shared budget. If, if for example, you are living with another person, so you have like a shared budget and a, a shared situation. So the eighth house is other people's money. And I think this is, uh, with this Mercury in Aries, for all of us, it, Mercury in Aries is giving us a lot of directness. It's giving a lot of honesty, transparency, transparency um, directness, um, but also the negative sides of the Mercury in Aries is impulsivity. Um, selfishness, self-centeredness. So it's giving all of this, but at the same time, because it's the, in the eighth house, I think you would really like to communicate a lot of the, the these shared resources and other people's money. <clears throat> Uh, and for example, if you want to, for example, um, you're going to ask ask around <laughs> like banks or organizations that can give you, for example, different loans, or you're going to ask uh, uh, ask uh, around your friends like what kind of credit do they have, like a, what kind, what do they have a mortgage? Are they are they paying off something? How are they paying off uh, uh, these things? So you're going to be very curious about these things. You're going to be very um, flexible and, and, and you want to be informed but at the same time because it's Mercury in Aries you can be impulsive and you can be uh, impatient and super fiery and quick and maybe that's not the, the, the moment to be all of these things because uh, it's about other people's money and shared resources so you have to first of all you have to talk with the other people, the, the other partner, the other organization, the other, um, for example, you and the bank. So there is a lot of communication and information going through it. Uh, just think everything uh, throughout and try to be, try to um, have your critical thinking more <laughs> uh, with this Mercury in Aries. Also, the eighth house is the mysterious house. It's the house of dead. It's the house of taboo topics, including uh, sex, taboo topics, shame, intimacy, uh, psychology, uh, research, digging really deep, uh, and uh, transformative uh, transformation psychology. So all of these things and secrets also the eighth house. So here with this Mercury in Aries, maybe you are the person that people are talking to about their secrets, about their, um, you know, topics and themes that usually they do not talk about. And maybe because uh, maybe you are seen as the person to talk about these things. People uh, want to share with you some of these um, some of these topics and these and these themes. Uh, you may seem to other people very knowledgeable when it comes to these things, and also you don't seem you you seem curious, you seem knowledgeable and informative, and you don't seem judgmental um, or or you know. Um, fixed in your uh, thinking and stuff like that. You also may be very curious about all of these things. So the 8th house, because it's these taboo topics in research, um, I'm going to say that maybe you're going to be get, you're going to get a little bit more curious about, um, for example, that and shows about that or books about that, um, about you know, all of those mystery like Sherlock Holmes, Agatha Christie type of <laughs> stories. Maybe you're gonna read all of these uh, books, watch all of the movies. Maybe you're gonna watch CSI, <laughs> you know, and things like that. Uh, solving the, the mystery, uh, solving the crime, um, and all of these things. Like the police work, the investigation, the research, the, and the psychological um, element in all of these things. This is very curious to you, so maybe you, you, you may become obsessed, you may start talking to a lot of people about these things. Um, I think you're definitely going to get way more knowledgeable and informative than before. Um, 
with this transit, with this Mercury in Aries in your eighth house. Um, next, uh, on the, uh, the next day, we have on the 10th of March, we have a new moon in Pisces, and this is happening in your seventh house. Um, as you know, we are in Pisces season currently until the 19th of March, so we are in your opposite sign Pisces. We are in the opposite sign season. So to me, I always think about when we are in, in a zodiac sign season, right now it's in Pisces season, so the, the opposite sign, uh, in this case you, Virgos, I think during this, this is a very... This is a, 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 a period of time, a season that is showing you a lot of lessons uh, when it comes to your opposite energy. And I've always thought <laughs> like that, uh, just because we are living during this season with your opposite energy. So you may be bombarded every day. You may have situations, you may have conversations with people about like understanding and seeing and analyzing what you're lacking and what you have to work on. It usually happens during uh, the opposite signs season. So you may be learning a lot uh, during the season about yourself, about your life, about your like everything. But most importantly, what you're lacking from your opposite sign. And, and <laughs> on top of that, we have on the 10th of March, the 10th of March, a new moon in Pisces. So it's a new moon in your opposite sign and it's happening in the seventh house. So the seventh house is the house of partnerships. It's the house of intimate partnerships, um, spouses, uh, also business partners, open enemies also. So this is, um, I think this is a major, uh, the new moon in Pisces in the seventh house is going to be a major moment for you because the new moon, I think with all new moons, the new moons are something hidden. Something is hidden. We don't see it. We, the, 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 the moon is not visible 100%. So there is something hidden. There is something um, that is, um, you know, it's not, um, not everything is seen, we don't, we don't have the entire information. We don't know like all of the information yet. So having said that <laughs> with the new moon in Pisces in your opposite sign, this new moon in Pisces, it's about dreams and imagination and faith and manifesting and all of the, all of, all of that, just leaving it to the faith, right? Leaving it to the universe and how are you, what is your, what is your relationship with your spirituality, with your faith, with your dreams, with your imagination? Um, so all of that side. Uh, that being said, it's, it's happening in your seventh house. So the house of, as we talked about, intimate partnerships, romantic partnerships, spouses, business partners. Uh, so to me, this is uh, maybe you are manifesting, you're dreaming about your perfect uh, perfect romantic partner. Maybe you're dreaming and manifesting and you're working really on like putting, uh, planting the seeds about your having ideas and having those like the manifestation that start, starts working about who is your favorite, not your favorite, but who is your dream like, who is your dream partner, romantic partner, um, and what qualities do they possess and how they how they work with you in a relationship and so on and so on. Um, so I think this may be like, <laughs> um, you know how um, when we were little there was this animation about the Spice Girls and the intro of the Spice Girls is how the, the dad, the scientist is creating them like sugar, spice and everything nice. And he's, he's like mixing it all together. To me, this new moon in Pisces in the seventh house, it's you, Virgo, mixing up in your mind, in your dreams, who is your fav who is your ideal romantic partner, who is your marriage partner, your future like spouse, who is your business partner, who do you want to be in a relationship? Like this, you are mixing like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want that, and you're thinking about it, and you're wishing, and you're dreaming, and I think it's very intimate and almost like secretive. Nobody knows about this, but it's very, it's it's a big wish that you are you are wishing for. Um, and uh, again, the sky is the limit. Don't be afraid of your dreams. Uh, there was a saying that if you if the, your dreams are not scaring you, they're not big enough. So dream for whoever you want, whatever you want, and um, 
you know, plant those seeds and let's see what happens, right? Um, and it's specifically in regards to your um, intimate relationships, inter intimate partnerships. Um, uh, last but not least, we have to talk about, okay, so we're going to talk about two more things. On the 11th of March, we have Venus entering in Pisces and on the 22nd of March, we have Mars entering Pisces. So again, Venus, the planet of love, beauty and uh, finances and Mars, the planet of war, aggression, uh, motivation, sexual drive, uh, hustle. Um, so those of those two planets are going into your opposite sign. So <laughs> they're going into Pisces. So again, March, um, first because of the, the, the Pisces season, second because of the new moon in Pisces, and third because of uh, Venus and Mars going into Pisces. They're going to, this energy is going to show you a lot what you're lacking. And this is not in a very, I don't, I don't mean to say it, everybody's lacking something, N nobody is perfect. So you have to really understand like this energy is showing you where you, 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 you need to work or what kind of qualities you need to attract in your partner on your, or in your friendships or in your life, in your colleagues and stuff like that. So what is this energy? This is a very opposite of your energy. So it's showing you, it's showing you what you, you, you need to work on or you need to attract in your life. Um, but it's, it's going to be very imag imaginative for you, very creative. Pisces energy, it's like the... For, I think for Virgo, Pisces energy is this super chaotic, but dreamlike fantasy and energy that just fuels Virgo and they can, they can create those dreams into reality. So I think this is going to be really, uh, be really nice for you. It's actually going to be very practical for you because you, 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 you're going to be fueled with a lot of motivation and energy, um, and dreamlike, you know, um, energy. Uh, last but not least, we have on the 25th of March, um, Libra full moon and lunar eclipse, uh, and it's happening in your second house. So the Libra full moon, lunar eclipse, it's about endings. It's about finishing different situations. Uh, Libra, the Libra full moon and lunar eclipse is, is looking for balance, um, the Libra is the scale, the sign of the scale, the symbol of the scale. So Libra is looking for uh, balance in all relationships and it's going to, you have to, you know, you, you have to do the scales, you have to find the balance, you have to uh, have justice, fairness and balance. The Libra full moon is pushing for this. And the lunar eclipse, because it's a lunar eclipse in, you know, in Libra, uh, whatever it's not working out for you, it's going to end. And it's specifically about relationships because it's about, you know, Libra. But it's happening in your second house. So this is about, the second house is about your money, um, material possessions, uh, anything that is material that you possess, like um, house, car, clothes, fragrance, fragr fra fragrances, food, drinks, uh, whatever it is. Uh, but it's also about your self-worth. So... I think here with this full moon, you, you, you may be thinking a lot about, first of all, about your money, um, you know, where maybe you have given a lot of money to other people th that you have not taken it back. And um, maybe you have put a lot of effort because it, the second house is about um, the second house is about self-worth. So where is your is your worth in other people or is your worth in yourself? Like you have to, you have to take the scale and you have to really look it and you have to, to make it. Um, so this can be a, a very introspective time for Virgos to look at um, those themes surrounding material possessions, self-worth, natural talents and how we, um, so the natural talents and how you use uh, your natural talents and all of these things. I think it's going to be a very interesting time for Virgos to just look at that area of uh, Virgo's life and analyze and, and see what's happening. <laughs> um, okay, have a great March. I think it's going to be very introspective. 
uh, and very interesting because with Mercury in Aries in the eighth house, other people's money and shared resources. And then on the 25th of March, the Libra full moon and lunar eclipse in your second house, your mind is on your, like your dreams may be about uh, your romantic partner and spouse, but your mind, I think it's about money and where does it go <laughs> and how do I... How do I earn money? Where does it go? The shared My shared budget with other people, my shared resources and so on. Um, so it's a very interesting month, I think, for Virgos. Uh, have a great month and let's talk about Libras now. Hi Libras, let's talk about what you can expect from March 2024. So starting off the month, we have Mercury in Aries. Uh, Mercury going into Aries on the 9th of March and it's happening in your 7th house. Now, Aries is your opposite sign. Mercury going into your opposite sign of Aries is going to give you a lot of um, this push and this, um, this, this aggression that maybe you don't normally have. And it's going to happen with Mercury. So Mercury is the planet of communication and talking and information and, uh, and um, you know, IQ. So it's going to give you a lot of fire, a lot of, um, openness and also aggression and impulsivity when it comes to you communicating with other people. Uh, and it's specifically going through your seventh house uh, <laughs> for Libras. So you have Mercury in Aries, Mercury going into Aries on the 9th of March and it's happening in your seventh house. So with this seventh house, it, it, it's happening uh, in your house of... Um, intimate relationships and partnerships, open enemies and spouses, so marriage partners. So if you are, so I'm going to separate, I think, this into two. If you're single, I think your your mind is on your love and your re rela future relationships. Like, why, why don't I have uh, a romantic partner what is happening uh, and you are going to be very curious you're going to be with this mercury you want to mercury is super curious it's the most curious flexible planet and energy in the zodiac sign so you want to know so you may be reading a lot of books you may be listening a lot of podcasts watching shows trying to understand like why are you single what is happening also you may be talking to a lot of people right you may be communicating you may be dating uh multiple people because mercury is like a very flexible and very fluid um energy so um you may be uh dating multiple people dating multiple partners so but because this Mercury is in Aries, you're going to be very honest and very, um, very direct uh, about this. So you're going to be very direct, you're going to ask questions and you're going to ask yourself the tough questions, right? But this Mercury in Aries is giving you a very optimistic, like, I, I can do this, <laughs> it's okay, I can... I can do it, I can communicate, I can I can do whatever I want, I will succeed. So it's giving you a, a very brave but also optimistic energy, which is great for you. Like it's 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 pushing you a little bit out of your zone a little bit, uh to not be so diplomatic, to not be so um to not compromise so much, to say whatever you want to say, you know, who gives a fuck, right? Uh, an if, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's it can be impulsive. Um, so you have to really. It will be difficult to 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 think before speaking, but you have to really try to think before speaking. Uh, the other part <laughs> of this Mercury in Aries in the seventh house. If you are in a relationship, a romantic relationship. Um, you may be very talkative into your relationship. Um, Mercury in Aries in the seventh house, if you're in a relationship, to me, it means that you just you communicate a lot with your partner. And uh, maybe you are demanding and you're saying what's on your mind. You don't really... I mean, you care about the other person, of course, but at this moment, you're just... A little bit of a little bit more selfish and self-centered and you want to talk about different things in different you want to be very honest you want to talk about these things with your partner with your um, romantic partner maybe you can also say to somebody that you like them romantically 
because more cleanery is here so it gives you bravery and gives you impuls impulsivity and honesty and fire um so yeah a lot of talking a lot of not only talking a lot of communicating you may be communicating a lot um with different people again um but yeah uh, also, the next day we have the new moon in Pisces on the 10th of March, it's happening, uh, and it's happening in your 6th house. So, the new moon in Pisces, it's, I think about spirituality, the new moons for me are always, there's something hidden, we don't know the entire truth, we don't know the, we don't have the entire information, there is something hidden with the new moons, but uh, the new moon in, in Pisces, it's about spirituality and faith and, and religion and about dreaming, dreamings and dreams and manifesting and all of these things and ideas. And in the sixth house, the sixth house is your everyday house. So how are you bringing that so ethereal magic and fantasy like into your everyday like what are you doing every day how can you uh, make it more magical more um, more to your to, to your own life right so it can be good for you uh, also how can you infuse from your own spirituality and from your own faith into your, your everyday life um, uh, also, the sixth house is about uh, physical health uh, and it's about um, your everyday job. Uh, so um, having this new moon in Pisces, you may be dreaming and manifesting a new job that is ideal for you. Or it's like dre you're dreaming about uh, your new job. You're trying to... You're trying to make it happen right but with your with your manifestation skills and abilities uh you may be dreaming about uh, about your physical health right so with new moon in pisces um you may blur the lines between like spiritual health and and mental health and physical health you may be on on a very good track with your physical health um and I think the most important thing during March for you is the on the 25th of March, we have a Libra full moon and a lunar eclipse and it's happening in your first house. So as we've talked about with Mercury and Aries in the seventh house, it's about your mind is on your relationships, um, whether you're single or not. And here on the 25th of March, this Libra full moon, lunar eclipse, it's about uh, relationships again. Um, but it's it's about endings it's about endings um of so libra is about relationships right so it's about endings of relationships but it's happening in your first house the first house is the house of self anything and everything that is connected with the self so i think here the libra scale scale not scale the libra scale is going to measure everything and it's going to so your energy the libra energy is going to push for justice equality fairness and it's going to kind of look in your life in your in your and anything that is connected with yourself because it's the first house and it's going to end a lot of illusions a lot of um bad habits, um, bad energy, bad um, maybe addictions even, a lot of things that you kind of are stuck on, you don't want to move on from these things because you feel like there are, um, you know, you just have hope for these things that they will, I'll, I'll keep pushing because it will happen one day. And here the Libra, the Libra full moon and the lunar eclipse is coming and is saying, no, you have to move on. You have to stop this. You have to end this. To me, this is a lot of endings, but I think this is positive because whatever you want as a fresh start, as a fresh relationship, as a fresh job, as a fresh, as a fresh new self, you need to end the previous chapter, right? You, you, you cannot have both of these things. Like, like you need to end something you need something needs to finish so that there is space for a new thing to come in so you need to you need to end <laughs> you need to, to end relationships to end illusions a lot of um a lot of uh even 
stuff that a lot of the mindset of Libras even may be not really realistic. So here the Libra will come in and will give a lot of realistic uh, view to Libras about life, about relationships. I think this Libra full moon and lunar eclipse is going to show Libras, like it, it's going to show to a lot of Libras like a mirror. And even if there is like 99% of that mirror you're, growing, you're positive about, you like it, you're, you're, you're confident, you're still going to be, you're going, still going to see 1% and be like, oh, like you have to, you have to end these things. These are not good for you. You have to, you will see them very cre clearly because it's in your sign, it's your own energy, right? So it's giving you this mirror like look, right? This is, for example, you... If you're complaining that you're single and you're not meeting anybody and this Libra Fulmon is showing you as a mirror like, okay, so where are you meeting new people? If you stay at home all, all day and all night and you're not meeting any new people, what do you expect? <laughs> like, how, You have to put in a little effort, right? You have to do a little bit. So this Libra full moon and lunar eclipse, not only is, I think it's going to end a lot of negative things for Libras, but it's also, so that's why I think it's positive. But it's also going to show like a big mirror <laughs> to Libra's face. Like, you are wrong about these things. You are delusional about these things. You are, uh, the things are not as you think. So it's going to show a, a big, huge mirror to Libra. Um, and I think it's going to be very positive. I know that it may not sound like it. <laughs> It may sound very scary um, and negative, but I don't think it is. I think it's it's just the way of life. Um, and as as we've as we've talked about, the Libra full moon and lunar eclipse is happening because it's for the better of us, right? For all of us. For Libra, it's just anything. It's happening in your first house, so it's like a major thing that is going to happen. Um, anything that is connected with you and yourself. Um, so, but this is also very supportive of whatever change you want to make, uh, in your life or with your own life, because it, you are the one who is, you are your own boss. So if you want to make whatever change, this kind of Libra full moon lunar eclipse energy is going to give you, uh, a lot of energy behind it. Um, thank you for being with me and let's talk about Scorpios now. Hi Scorpios, let's talk about what you can expect from March 2024. Um, we are starting with, on the 9th of March, Mercury is entering into Aries and it's happening in your 6th house. Um, Mercury in Aries is giving a lot of honesty to all of us, transparency, but also aggression, impulsive, uh, impulsive energy, and also a lot of uh, selfishness, self-centeredness even. Uh, so here in your sixth house, the sixth house is the everyday house. It's the house of um, physical health, the house of the everyday job, colleagues, pets. Uh, and everyday habits. So here with this Mercury in Aries, I think that you're going to become, for this transit, I think you're going to become uh, more talkative, more communicative in your everyday job. You're going to communicate in a very honest and transparent way with your colleagues, with your the people in your everyday job, so you can have a lot of like more information coming in, you're absorbing new information and you're, it's coming out. I think also because it's in the sixth house and it's the, it's the house of like the everyday job, you may start a short course or you may be reading or and or learning about your everyday job. So this is not your profession, career, this is the 10th house. We are talking about your everyday job, uh, the, the nine to five that is paying the bills, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and paying the rent. So, so having that in mind, the everyday job, I think it's a very, um, because it's Mercury, so you're going to learn a lot. You're going to, first of all, you're going to want, you're feeling very curious. You're talking with your colleagues. Maybe you are attending courses or like the, the job is 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 um, giving you like free 
access to like free online courses or like a budget to 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 uh, like an annual budget to go like start a course but it's something connected with your everyday job you're learning more about your everyday job you're learning more about your colleagues you are curious that's why it's happening <laughs> you're curious you want to know uh, even if it's not anything formal you may even just be bored and just start asking your colleagues like oh so what are you doing like what is like you're going for example into uh the sales department and start like asking people like oh so it, this is your job so this is what you do every day oh cool cool so what are you doing now <laughs> so what are you doing now so you're becoming more informative but you're also becoming very curious and talkative and because it's mercury in aries it's giving a lot of um this very this very childlike energy of curiosity like people are not seeing you as threatening or like oh they're asking because they want to steal my job or any kind of this this relationship uh, this 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 thinking uh, it's not that <laughs> it's not that um, so yeah um, you also may seem to your colleagues and your everyday the people in your everyday job that you are very smart, you're very curious, you're, you're very informed uh, on an everyday basis. You're like you're like a newsletter a little bit. You're like the news every day coming in with the new news that are coming out. Uh, you know the f you're the first one to know. You're very curious. Uh, again, just be careful not to be too impulsive and too selfish because and aggressive because it's Mercury in Aries. Um, Moving on, the next day we have on the 10th of March, new moon in Pisces, and it's happening in your fifth house. Uh, the new moon usually, so new moons are always about something hidden. Uh, something is, we don't have the entire information, we don't know the entire truth, something is hidden from us. So the new moon in Pisces, it's about spirituality and, and faith and, and even religion, manifestation, dreaming and, and ideas. So all of these things are happening in your fifth house. Now, the fifth house uh, can can be, is, is ruling a lot of things. <laughs> the fifth house is uh, children and inner child. So if we're talking about actual children, this new moon in Pisces in the fifth house, uh, you may become a parent, right? You may give birth to a child. You may conceive a child. Or uh, in some way, a child or children may come, in, come up, like, pop out in your life <laughs> from somewhere, right? Uh, a friend of yours may have a child. You may adopt a child. Uh, you may become a teacher or uh, somebody who works with children. So you start this job that is, you're, you're connected with children now. Or you may uh, get introduced to, like, children or a child that is going to, you're going to get very inspired by, by this child or children. Uh, if, it's, if it's about your, your own inner child, uh, I think it's about connecting very well with this inner child and being very dreamlike and into this fantasy life and uh, just just feeding your inner child with a lot of because it's in Pisces the new moon in Pisces right so it's very fantasy like it's very dreamlike uh, this situation with uh, the new moon in Pisces in the fifth house uh, fifth house is also creativity hobbies uh, fun just pure fun um, so the new moon in Pisces in the fifth house I think you may be connecting because Again, the new, moon, the new moon in Pisces is about dreams and dreaming and, and faith and spirituality. I think you may be bringing a lot of these things into your own hobbies. Uh, you may start, uh, you, may, you may feel like your creativity is on fire right now. Um, maybe you're giving birth to a lot of ideas. <laughs> your creativity, your imagination, you're on fire at, this, at the moment. So maybe your own... Uh, imagination and creativity is on fire. Uh, you, you may be creating a lot of new things. You may feel very inspired and motivated. Um, don't forget, we are in Pisces season. So Pisces is a water sign as you are. Um, and this new moon is in a water sign. Pisces is a water sign. So this new moon is happening in the water element. So you are you are swimming, right? You're swimming in your element. You're feeling feeded. 
<laughs> right? You're feeling, everybody's feeling you, you're feeling very inspired, you're feeling very motivated. So you may become um, passionate and, and, and driven and inspired and you may create a lot of uh, new art, uh, you may uh, infuse a lot of your hobbies with your spirituality, you may uh, feel inspired by uh, your own children or children around you. So. It's a very creative, I think this is a very potent and creative time. Um, so I think this is a very magical moment for a lot of Scorpios. Also, when we're talking about the, the Pisces season and the new moon in Pisces, we have on the 11th of March, Venus in Pisces. Uh, and we have on the 22nd of March, Mars entering Pisces. So we have Venus, the planet of love, beauty, and finances, and Mars, the planet of war, aggression, sex, drive, hustle, um, in going, those two planets also going into Pisces. So again, you are feeling very creative. You're feeling very connected with your imagination, with your passion, with your, this is water, this is your element, right? So even even though it's not your it's not your season, you are very supported by, uh, just by the energy. You're very creative, you're very uh, emotional and emotionally expressive. So this may be great for your art, if you're an artist or uh, you want to, uh, even if you're not an artist, you may find a way how to kind of burn out all of these emotions inside of you. Don't bottle up. This is the moment to just release and let it go. And in the in the, in 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 doing that, you may actually create something that is incredibly beautiful and spiritual. You never know. <laughs> um, and on the twenty fifth of March. Uh, we have a Libra full moon and lunar eclipse and it's happening in your 12th house. So the 12th house is the last uh, house of the zodiac uh, and this Libra full moon and lunar eclipse, it's about endings. It's about the end of the chapter, the end of the season and because it's in Libra, Libra is about, about relationships, right? So the Libra energy is al always going to pull uh, it's always always going to push, sorry, for justice, fairness, and balance, because it's the scale. Libra is the scale, so Libra is always pushing for um, fairness and justice. And this specific, it's 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 in about relationships, but it's happening in your twelfth house. So the twelfth house, the last zodiac sign, uh, the the last zodiac house, uh, it's about. Uh, uh, the unconscious realm, uh, spirituality, sleep, uh, mental health, mental issues, um, dreams and delusions and nightmares, but also addictions, isolation, depression, uh, a lot of uh, mental health issues. So here you, I think a lot of endings will happen for Scorpios with their own like mental health and mind mindset. Um, a lot of negative, uh, a lot of negative traits may end. Uh, a lot of bad habits uh, may end. A lot of addictions, a lot of mental health issues. Things are going to end that are not good for you. Um, things are going to finish, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, you may, you may observe, observe and analyze a lot of your own mind. And, and consciousness um, before you even kind of apply it outwards. Just, this is a very intimate position. Uh, in the 12th house, this is the most isolated, the last house. Um, so it's, and it's because it, it's um, in your 12th house, uh, whatever you are dealing with that is ending, it's not coming back. It's the last house. This is the spiritual death of things. Uh, it's an, an end of an era, uh, uh, an end of the book, of the chapter, whatever it is, it's the end of something and it's never coming back. Um, you may be, it may be a little bit more difficult for you to find out what it is because it's in the 12th house. So it's a very foggy, uh, illusional place. And it's also very, it's the subconscious, right? So we don't, we don't, we are not conscious of it, right? Uh, so, um, 
you may receive also a lot of uh, messages from sleeping and and your dreams um, you may receive a lot of kind of symbols because you don't you cannot understand like openly and clearly what is it and what's happening and so on but there is a lot of hard work going on behind your behind yourself right in your in the back of your head in the back of your mind so this is a very serious work going but you may you may be feeling a little bit more uh, tired and you want to um you want to sleep more, you want to relax, you want to be alone, uh, to not be around people, but you may not understand why. So you have to, first you have to understand why, and then um, you, can, you can see because of all of these symbols, because of all of these things into your dreams, that uh, you are, you're working on a lot of heavy topics, a lot of heavy subconscious things that are happening. Uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be a very transformative month. Also, we are talking about Mercury and Aries in the sixth house, that is physical health and Libra full moon uh, lunar eclipse in your twelfth house. So it's it's about physical health and mental health are the, the two things. Thank you for being with me. Let's talk about Sagittarius now. Hi Sagittarius, let's talk about what you can expect from March 2024. So, we are going to start with Mercury in Aries. It's happening on the 9th of March and Mercury is entering into Aries uh, in your fifth house. So, this is, I think, a very creative and passionate position for you because, first of all, it's Mercury in Aries. Aries is a fire sign, as you are. So, this is giving you a lot of fire in your, in your communication, a lot of quick information, quick communication. You are talking, you are very uh, honest and transparent and direct and, and right now everybody everybody is like that but they also really respect this kind of communication at the moment but it's but because mercury in aries is happening in your fifth house so the fifth house is about children inner child creativity fun hobbies also casual dating and romance uh, so this is giving i think a lot of passion to sagittarius you may be talking about uh you may be you may be feeling very inspired in conversations with children you may be talking with uh, your partner or thinking about having children you may want to you may actually feed if you're talking about inner child you may feed your inner child with a lot of this honest direct communication because it's mercury in aries right so you're very honest you're very fiery and uh direct uh so this is also feeding up because it's the fifth house feeding feeding up your creativity your fun your hobbies if you're talking about a casual dating and romance so these are the, the first stages of the dating uh, uh, and uh, um, like the early romance of days and weeks um, this is really fun because it's Mercury Aries, very honest, very direct, also very impulsive and uh, selfish. So you have to be careful with that. You have to be careful how you're perceived. You may be perceived as very pushy, very aggressive because you are so direct and fiery. Um, but I think it's giving you a lot of fire. It's giving you a lot of nice communication. This is the style of communication you respect, you like. So this is something that you really prefer. You don't, you're not really into like, <laughs> remember when we, we were students and, and uh, while we were uh, studying literature and people will ask us, um, what did the author meant to say? <laughs> and I think Sagittarius were the people who are like, if the, if the author wanted to say something, they, they would have said it. Like, how, ca how can I know what the author wanted to say, right? So you're not really into the, um, you know, the, 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 symbol, the symbolism and, and the hints and the passive aggressiveness and stuff like that. You're very direct and you really respect that kind of directness into uh, your life and into your relationships, any type of relationships. So right now, this is what <laughs> this is what this is all about. The Mercury in Aries, directness, fire, fire, um, quick, impulsive, also selfish uh, can be seen as 
rude sometimes because it's so direct and so honest. On the next day, the 10th of March, we have a new moon in Pisces and it's happening in your fourth house. So the new moon in Pisces is um, dreams, ideas, manifestations, spirituality, religion, faith, all of these things, but it's happening in your fourth house. So the, so the fourth house is one of the most intimate, emotional uh, houses of the zodiac sign. So it's about your home where, where you were born. So your home, family, parents, uh, fourth, ho fourth house is connected with mother uh, or mad mother figure. Uh, it's connected with um, your past, your your family history, your roots, your uh, deep like seated emotions. Uh, it's also um, very connected with mother language, native language, and and uh, native land, native country. So here with the new moon in Pisces, I think it may have like a lot <laughs> of areas that you may uh, a lot of areas that this may come out and, and play out in, but it's giving, maybe you are trying to manifest a new home, a new house, a new, a new property, because the fourth house is connected with house, home, property. Maybe you are dreaming, you are creating, you are, you have a lot of ideas about, maybe you are going to, uh, remodel your house at the moment maybe you are wishing for like to buy a new property maybe you're wishing to have a family uh, uh, you are also very uh, i think with this new moon in pisces you are very close to the manifestation so you may be planting seeds about the future you may be dreaming about like seeing for example a house and thinking like oh this is this is my dream house. I would love to have this house. And maybe in the future you can have it. Like, I, I really hope so. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers. Um, but uh, thinking about that, wishing, uh, wishful thinking, having ideas, having these dreams and faith and spirituality, um, it may also be about your parents and family. And we talked about uh, the, the mom uh, energy, the mother energy. So uh, having a lot of maybe spiritual conversations having a lot of spiritual energy about your family uh i think it's a very positive energy though um the, the new moon in pisces we are in pisces season we have a new moon in pisces so this is going to be a very spiritual sensitive emotional time so you may have uh, a very very sensitive conversations with your family with your mother it may be in regards to your past, your history, your family history, uh, all of these things. Uh, something else that we have to talk about, on the 19th of March, the sun is entering into Aries. We are going into Aries season and this is actually really, really nice for you because uh, we have been uh, since the 19th of March into Pisces season. So Pisces are water, so you as a fire sign Mm, a little bit more challenging for you to swim in the Pisces emotion <laughs> and, and chaos and all of this, all of this. Um, but you're also, but you're also um, um, a mutable sign as uh, Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, and you are uh, 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 mutable signs. So. This is nice for you because it's a mutable energy. You can move, you can pivot, you can change, you can you can move very quickly. But it's it's very watery, right? It's very emotional, um, and it's not very it's not supporting you so much. Uh, but entering into any season from the nineteenth of March um, forward on, uh, Aries is a fire sign, and you're a fire sign, so you are in fire the fire element. Yes, it is not your season, it is not Sag season, but it is uh, an, a, 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 fire, uh, a fire season, a fire element. So it's actually very supportive of you. Uh, fresh new starts, fresh new beginnings, the 80 season, uh, because it's fire, things are happening very quickly uh, and you're moving very quickly. So I think until the 19th of March, you can rest a little bit and you can, you can have a little bit of rest before you kind of charge into like like uh, uh, a horse like charging in to battle <laughs> right um, 
Also, on the 25th of March, this is important because we have a Libra full moon and lunar eclipse uh, and it's happening in your 11th house. So this, the Libra full moon and lunar eclipse is about endings. Uh, and because it's Libra, Libra is pushing for uh, relationships, fairness, balance, equality into all relationships. Uh, but it's because it's because of it's because. It is because <laughs> it is a full moon and lunar eclipse. Um, it's endings. It's it's uh, whatever it's not good for you, whatever it's not working for you, uh, it's going to end. It's going to finish. It's going to be no more. So the 11th house is the house of friendships, uh, social groups, organizations, charities, ideas also, um, and networking. So this is... A lot of your friendships may be either tra transforming into different uh, levels of relationships or they're ending. You may have friends that can are, are, for example, toxic. You may have toxic friendships. You may have... Uh, you may have bad habits into friendships. You may be your you such you may be the bad friend, right? So you may be ending habits, bad habits that are making a bad friend, are making a toxic friend. So you have to be very aware of these things around the 25th of March. Um, maybe you will receive a lot of information about yourself from your friendships from your social groups from your uh networking uh also i think with ideas you may be letting go of ideas that are not working out the 11th house is ideas and 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 creativity um but there are some ideas that are not working out at the moment so you might be ending them you might be not just pausing them, just completely, just, okay, this is not working out. Just finish this chapter, end this relationship, end this friendship, uh, and let's move on. Um, I know it may sound very negative, but it's actually, to me, it's a very positive thing. Because for something else, for something new to begin, for something new to happen, you have to finish the first, the, the, the last thing, right? You have to end and you have to make space. And then the new positive energy is going to, and positive people and the good relationships are going to come in. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of purge there in the 11th house with your friendships and organizations, but um, I think it's it's for, for your best. Uh, have a great March and let's talk about Capricorn now. Hi Capricorns, let's talk about what you can expect from March 2024. So we are starting with Mercury in Aries on the 9th of March, uh, entering into your fourth house. As we've talked about in the video about the major transits, Mercury in Aries is giving us a lot of um, honest, direct, transparent, fiery, quick communication style. But at the same time, it can be too aggressive, pushy, impulsive, uh, and selfish so it can be both ways positive and negative of the mercury in aries uh when it's happening in your fourth house i think there is a lot of communication in your so the fourth house is the the house of um home where you were born um home family parents mother um the house, the property that you were born into. So it's intimate uh, feelings, past, the family history, um, the the mother language and native language and native land, native country. Mm, so having this Mercury in Aries in the fourth house, I think this is a lot of honest conversations, a lot of direct honest conversations about um, in your family like very honest to the point of being rude and hurtful because they're so honest and direct um in your family um you may be the most honest person there uh <laughs> at the moment and you may be saying saying it as it is um but you have to be respectful of other people's feelings also don't forget that it's not just i'm just gonna say it and i don't care about anybody else it's also about 
respecting other people's feelings and 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 you don't you don't want to uh, hurt other people's feelings without any reason just because you're you're just because you want to say things uh so yeah um you communicating a lot uh being very direct being very honest uh also being very curious you mercury is a very curious planet and energy you may be asking around your family or family members about uh certain situation about or situations about people about the family history <laughs> you may be very curious about actually your family history, family tree, uh, you may be asking around, you may be reading around uh, about it. Uh, also, I think here, because it's the fourth house, I think it's about honest conversations with your mother. Fourth house is the mother, the mother figure. Um, you may be very honest and it may be very hurtful, but I think those are conversations that they need to happen like it's very important that you say what's on your mind and you're very honest uh but not hurtful right you're honest but respectful at the same time um yeah a lot of conversations in in just to your home a lot of conversations you may be talking about a property for example you may be talking about your your house your property you want maybe to um uh, buy a new property for example and you may be asking around different people you may be you may be talking with your parents or your mother about advice you may also if you are a parent you may be talking to your own parents and be very um direct <laughs> about for example you asking for advice you asking you having a lot of questions you being very curious about like can you help me? Can you like give me some advice and stuff like that? Um, it can be a very positive uh, experience because it's in the fourth house, Mercury and Aries, very honest, very direct. But if you um, don't care about other people's feelings, this may become very argumentative position because you're just I'm just I'm just gonna say it. And you can you can take it as you want, right? I I don't care how you're gonna take it. And this is not the, this is not the energy we want. Uh, don't start fights just because you want to say stuff. Be as respectful as possible. Um, next we have the new moon in Pisces. It's happening on the 10th of March, and it's happening in your third house. So the third house is the house of communication. <laughs> so it's the house of communication, it's the house of siblings, also neighbors and neighborhoods, um, short trips and short uh, courses also. So with this new moon in Pisces, I think you're planting seeds about your communication. You may be learning a new language, for example. You may, um, you may be... You may be also manifesting and dreaming about, for example, your 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 uh, sibling, uh, brother uh, or sister. Uh, you may be wishing, uh, like like a wishful thinking. You may be wishing the best for them. You may be like praying for them, for example, and stuff like that. Uh, but there is a lot of dreams and there is a lot of spirituality here in the third house. Um, how can you be better? A better communicator, a better, um, better listener, uh, a better, a better uh, sibling, a better neighbor. Uh, so how can you, how can you become better? Um, you're, you're dreaming, you're manifesting, you're, you're thinking about ideas. Um, probably one of the most important things for you in March is on the 25th of March we have a Libra full moon and lunar eclipse, and it's happening in your tenth house. So the full moon uh, and lunar eclipse in Libra, it's about endings. It's about endings of chapters that are finished, books, finishings, uh, endings of like this, this season, this, this era <laughs> that is happening. So have, being in Libra, it's about relationships. Uh, in Libra, the full moon in Libra is going to push for equality, fairness, and ju just this. In relationships, uh, the Libra is the scale, so you have to weigh the scale and see how things are. And it's happening in your 10th house. The 10th house is the most visible house in astrology. It's the house uh, uh, that is ruling your career, profession, reputation, social brand, name. Uh, so it's not your everyday job. It's your profession. It's your career, right? Uh, it's, it's what your name is known for. 
it's your social image it's your social brand uh, so having here this full moon in libra it's about endings so you may be ending different relationships that are hurting your social image you may be ending you may be um finished with a career for example you may for example you may have become a parent and you have decided that i cannot work full time as a professor because i'm a parent now and i need to i need to pay more attention to my child this is more important at the moment so you're finishing something you're ending something um that is in your the most visible house uh it's very important to kind of look around and be aware of what is bad for you what is bad for your reputation what is bad for your name uh because you have to really protect it and the libra full moon and lunar eclipse is going to show you where you have to kind of cut off and kind of end a lot of things that are not good for you um you have to protect yourself so yeah have a great month and let's talk about aquarius now hi aquarius let's talk about what you can expect from march 2024 so we're starting with mercury in aries it's happening on the 9th of march and it's going through your third house so the third house is the house of communication speaking talking um, information. It's also the house of siblings, uh, short trips, short courses, and neighbors in neighborhood. So here with this Mercury in Aries, as we've talked about, uh, is Mercury in Aries is giving a lot of direct, honest, transparent, fiery, quick communication style. But the negative side <laughs> is that it can become a very uh, selfish arrogant, pushy, aggressive position of Mercury in Aries. So here in the third house, I think it's very, this is the most prominent, like it's the most visible for Aquarius uh, during March, during this transit of Mercury, because you, this is the style that it's going to be like. People are going to see you as a very honest, direct, but also pushy and aggressive communicator. Uh, so you have to be very respectful of people's feelings, uh, be as direct as honest as possible, but also be very respectful of other people's feelings. Uh, and think before talk, uh, talking. I know it's very difficult, but you have to. Uh, also, you're going to have a very honest communication style with your siblings, neighbors and neighbors and people in your neighborhood. Uh, you may also start, because it's in the third house, it's about short, di short distance traveling and short courses. You may be learning at the moment, you may be, because it's Mercury in, in Aries, so Aries is the first sign, right? So it's starting something new. You may be starting something, uh, a, a new, sh uh, maybe you're starting a new job and you have to travel. Uh, short distance so you are learning a lot of new things you're you're you are you're learning more about your neighborhood you're more curious about your neighbors about your neighborhoods um, you're also you may be starting a short course you are learning something for the first time you are very quickly absorbing a lot of new information um then on the 10th of march we have new moon in pisces and it's happening in your second house so the new moon in Pisces is about planting seeds, but it's also about manifestation, spirituality, faith, religion, ideas, imagination, dreaming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this new moon, because it's in the second house, your second house. Um, second house is about money, material possessions, anything material that you can possess. And it's also about um, natural talents. Uh, self-worth. Uh, so here with this new moon in Pisces, you may be um, dreaming and having a lot of creative ideas about, first of all, your self-worth. You are you're really working on your self-worth, uh, but also you're really thinking about ways how to manifest more money, ways of how uh, different ideas, different dreams about how can you earn more with your natural talents so you are really using the, the you have a lot of natural talents but the, you may be sleeping on them right so you you have to learn how to navigate these things how to and not only to know them but also use them so that you can have more material success material possessions more money more finances um so 
leveling up your self-worth, leveling up your natural talents and how you use them, it's going to bring you more material possessions. But you are really putting it all in, in the universe, maybe in your spirituality, in your faith. You're just, you're dreaming, you're manifesting and you're planting the seeds and you're letting it go right you're you're just letting it go because if you plant seeds and you go after 10 minutes and you start digging up they're not going to grow up right so you have to let the seeds do the thing do the thing um and last but not least on the 25th of march we have a libra full moon and lunar eclipse and it's happening in your ninth house so this Libra full moon and lunar eclipse, like eclipse, it's about endings. Endings of a chapter, a season of your life, something that is happening. And Libra, because it's the Libra energy, it's, it's about relationships and it's about pushing for equality, fairness and justice in relationships. Uh, but it, it's because it's, it's happening in your ninth house. So the ninth house is the house of travel, higher education, meaning more than high school, uh, long term and long distance traveling, uh, foreign lands, foreigners, foreign languages. It's also, uh, also about publishing. It's also about um, personal philosophy uh, and mind, um, like mindset. So here with this full moon uh, and lunar eclipse in Libra, in the, your ninth house, there is something that, there is, something that is ending. Uh, for now. Uh, so you may be dropping off from university or some type of course. You may be uh, ending uh, a, a course, you may be ending uh, the traveling days for now. You may be stopping traveling for, for this moment. Um, you may be also ending uh, different relationships that you have with foreigners. You may be um, you may be stopping something for a while or you may be dropping it off completely, ending it completely. Um, and uh, this, I know this may sound very negative, but it's because I believe that uh, wherever we have endings, it's so that we can have new beginnings and new fresh starts. So you need to drop some things and you need to end and especially when it comes to your personal philosophy and mindset you may be ending a way of thinking that it's not working out for your the way that you're living at the moment right you want to evolve you want to level up and you cannot continue with the way you're thinking and your personal philosophy so you need to drop it <laughs> you need to end it you need to transform it so here these endings and um the I think it's, it's either going to transform into something more positive or it's going to make space for something more positive, more positive energy, more positive people um, and more positive relationships. Uh, so yeah, have a great month uh, of March. Uh, thank you all for being with me and uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.